Hey everybody! Morning, everyone, welcome, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. <laughs> My name is Noel McBoy, <laughs> and I'm Scott Ram. And that was Asa Fadernai on piano with that lovely tune for this Monday morning. What was that, Asa? That's called Guantanamara. Nice. Cool, that's a nice light tune for the Monday. Yep. Well, but, there is a red flag warning out there uh -oh. for uh, some of you hot shots out there who are in the fire crew, which is the perfect storm of temperatures and wind to help spread fire. So these are the days where you really got to watch out for all that kind of stuff. So if you guys uh, get a chance, um, it looks like, uh, well, I can't really show you the weather right now, but I'll show you in a bit. Um, it is currently 57 degrees outside. Uh, your uh, highs can be 71 degrees. Uh, your lows can be four, uh, 45 degrees outside. But of course, you can um, look that up at uh, theweatherchannel.gov, and you can find out more information about that as as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But of course, uh, if you're interested in finding out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Missoula well. Community Access Television is also on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us, just go to MCAT.org. But um, we're going to take a quick little interlude and we're going to actually throw it to ASAP if ASAP wants to play us a nice little song. Sure. All right, okay, take it away, ASAP. Thank you very much. Yeah, that <laughs> that was perfect. Nice yeah. <laughs> What's that one called? Call me. Call me. Mel Torme. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah, but of course, uh, once again, our website is wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you right out twice. Facebook, Twitter, at wakeupmissoula. MCAT's Twitter, at MCAT TV. And also like us on Facebook and find out more information, MCAT.org. Yes, MCAT.org is a great uh, reference for you guys mm -hmm. to uh, look up uh, programming, um, current and past programming. But of course, we have some new programming on tonight. But first, I want to talk a little bit about, about the roads report. So if you guys are uh, um, interested in uh, trying to avoid traffic here and there, I think the biggest thing is that Stockman Bank is going to be uh, um, rapidly expanding their construction pretty soon. So they kind of want to get this done ASAP, but of course they, they won't get done until like, uh, doesn't necessarily say when they're going to get done, maybe like late September, mid-October. They're going to keep on doing it until it's done basically. Um, you can, of course, Brook Street is still closed. The uh, intersection of Highway 93 and Pizza is for the old, little overpass they're going to be building for uh, bikers and pedestrians. Uh, Hill View Way, 23rd or 39th Street. It's the, uh, it's the I think it's the SID um, on Hillview Way that they're yeah, going to Special it. Improvement District. Mm -hmm. Yep. They discussed that. Uh, it was last year, the mm -hmm. end of last year. They, they, were talking they about talked that? about it for like a year and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's South 50th Street West and South 60th Street West, and there's this, of course, uh, side streets between um, Orange and Higgins. And there's you know there's curb and sidewalk improvement, uh, Linda Vista Boulevard, Old Highway 93, Post Sliding Road to McDonald Street, Guardsman Lane in Fort Missoula. The Fort Missoula Regional Park is under construction, so if you guys go to Fort Missoula, just be aware that there are some detours as well along the way. Margaret Mount to Kensington, Strand to um, Strand and uh, Burlington, Eaton to West End. Of course, East Pine and Patty Street intersection. They're continuing to work, and it's oh yeah, the art park. Mm -hmm. Cool. They uh, officially closed the street last weekend. Oh, did they? And they're going to be working on this. Um, nice. It's going. They say it's going to take three to four months. Yep. Yeah. It's I the have... art park, so it's not just like a road improvement. It's actually they're going to make a, like a really cool little design and stuff. No mm -hmm. asphalt. It's going to be basically like I don't know if they're going to lay brick. It's going to be um, like I, I looked at the design. It's pretty pretty simple. Just kind of like a nice, nice little patio area. I think they mm -hmm. might have like. Um, They'll take out the parking in front of um, Adventure Cycling and right next to the Missoula Art Museum. Mm -hmm. So they take out all that parking and build a little park. Well, you know, the Adventure Cycling, they probably shouldn't be driving anyways. Yeah, exactly. They're all cyclists. <laughs> That's probably what they said. It's like, we probably, we don't <laughs> no, even use the parking really. It's yeah. like, if we do drive, it's just like, we probably shouldn't work here. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I actually have a road closure. So um, I live on the north side and the uh, Orange Street underpass is being closed at night. 
They're oh. actually repaving it. So from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m., that uh, underpass from town going into the north side on Orange Street is closed. So oh, be aware of that. The Orange Street Tunnel? Yep, yeah. And so I'm really happy about that because I always drive under there, and there are all these like really big potholes that you really have to like maneuver around, and that tunnel isn't very big. Yeah. So they are fixing that, but that's from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. So yeah, just they saw be aware the, of that I saw the detour signs. Um, yeah. They were just like mounted on um, mm -hmm. Spruce and Orange Street. They were just kind of sitting there. Yeah. It's like, oh, they must be ready to do construction, or yeah. they and just. So I drove the past way. it last night, but couldn't drive through. But I actually drove through the tunnel this morning on the way here and it was fine. Oh yeah. Yeah, so from 10 that's to 6 good. that's closed. For hmm. for tonight and then tomorrow and Yeah, then there's not many ways to actually get over the no, uh, train tracks at there's all. There's really, like two ways. There's three ways. It's you well, go the, to the Scott Street Bridge, yeah. you go under Orange Street right. underpass or you go all the way around that back road and usually from uh, Spruce Street and Madison Street. Yeah, it was not. What's that one? One street. It's like going up to Greeno. It's like the. Uh, that's what I was mile. just talking about. And that that's one. usually like if that's you, fifth, like maybe? almost like you have a, you have a fifty fifty chance of running into that train. Mm. It's like you go right up there. It's like oh, the train again. Then you always have to turn around and go underneath Orange Street. And that will know if that train comes. Then you can just turn all the way around and go around Broadway. And so yeah. you go Broadway and then Van Buren and you go all the way around Rattlesnake and then you skip the train. Or jump on the highway and just uh, yeah. get off Van Buren. Yeah, I know there are all these different ways you could do it. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but the living sure. on the north side is a little bit of a hassle. And like, if I ever want to like go and get some food, like I really have to drive out of the neighborhood. I can't just like, oh, there's some food right there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Perils at the north side. But uh, it's worth the perils it. of the north side. No, no grocery <laughs> store. There's a gas no station. No gas station. And maybe yeah. a, like a re couple restaurants. No, just one. It. There's that one restaurant yeah. that's on the north It'd side. It'd be nice if the north side had a grocery store. Yeah. I mean, Safeway is on the other side of Scott Street Bridge, but yeah. that's like. Around. I don't know. No, I don't. No, I don't. But of course, uh, we do have some new programs for you guys. Oh, nice. um, uh, we have a new art clip we'll show for you guys later in the show between uh, events. Um, I have Tales from the Weekend. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly proud of this one. Uh, okay, so, anyways, uh, here is what you can expect new on MCAT tonight and tomorrow night, starting um, around f um, early evening, 4 o'clock fingers on the tablecloth and I could feel the light shining on my face and I could smell the mixture of the perm solution with the potatoes and gravy and I thought to myself this would be an interesting moment to recreate in a photograph and so I did. So um, my early foundation in painting and drawing informs my photographic work and um, my aesthetic has definitely been influenced by my Catholic upbringing and exposure to religious iconography. So here you can see a clear reference to the Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> religion uh, via Augustine of Hippo, Hippo um, Zoroastrian ideals came into Islam uh, under the guise of Shiism when the Rashidun Caliphs figured out that the Rashidun Caliphs, Caliphs are the, the three original Caliphs um, and when, when, when they figured out that they, they had to have a structure to rule this vast empire that they had been given by the grace of Allah um, and the only people that had that structure were the people they just conquered the Persians all had a great weekend it is Monday and so I've got some events going on for your Monday to get you started get your week started 
So we've got a couple camps for the little ones. See, there, these are all, these three camps are at Roots Acro Sports Center. First one is a preschool camp, Super Science Mysteries. Starts for at nine, it goes from nine to noon, or you can do a full day from nine to 3.30. Uh, it's ages three to five. Uh, regular registration is $175, or walk-in rate is $185. Gymnastics themed camp is at nine o'clock. Uh, same price, $175 if you pre-registered, walk-in is $185. And then trampoline camp, same exact thing. Walk in is $185. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. So you guys can call 728-4258 uh, if you want to sign up for uh, Super Science Mysteries, Gymnastic Theme Camp, or Trampoline Camp. Over at the Roxy Theater, they're hosting a Girls Rock Music Video Camp that starts at 9 a.m. And so it's an all-girl filmmaking team to conceptualize, location, location scout, and film a music video during Zach's Girls Rock Camp. So the Girls Rock Camp is put on by the Zach, and then the Roxy is going to make a music video with them. And so that's what they'll be doing all week long. And they'll be pre they will be pre be premiering their music video August 26th at the Roxy, which is this Friday. At the Roxy Theater at 11, they've got a movie going on. Um, it's called Howl's Moving Castle. And I don't know how much it is, but it uh, runs in line with the series of anime children's movies that they've been showing all month long. There's Kids Table at the Missoula Public Library. This is a series for 18, ages 18 and younger to get a free lunch. And then they usually do an activity after that. Over at Montgomery Distillery is Moscow Monday. A dollar from each cocktail sold will go to a different nonprofit from the Missoula, Montana area. We've got a couple bridge groups. There's bridge group at the Missoula Senior Center at 1 o'clock. And then we have our duplicate bridge group down at uh, Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club. That's also at 1 o'clock. <laughs> so, which one are you going to go to? <laughs> you don't know where either one is. No. Well, one of them's at the... Senior Center. And one the other one's at one the is... Senior Center. Who knows? The other one is 2825 Stockyard Road. <laughs> but where is that? I don't know. I feel like the Senior Center one sounds a lot safer. You know, like the other one, you're just like, where am I? So it's like some dark alley. There's some, yeah. And people are playing, playing bridge. Alley. People are playing bridge in Under the, alley. the bridge. Under the bridge with guns. Yeah. yeah. Just go to Senior Center. It's like, a, it's like Russian roulette, but with bridge. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> senior Center is much safer, I think. It's guys. like, oh, uh, I got an ace, uh, I got a club, and I got a gun. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if aces are in bridge. I win. I know. I don't even know how to yeah, play bridge. bridge. Yeah, no idea. But you're we've supposed got a to uh, have, like, I think it's like a, a straight flush of everything, of a of some kind. Oh, really? Of, like, from, like, all the way from the bottom to the top, because you I guess you're forming a bridge. Oh, that's cute. I would imagine that bridge just like you've just like, it's we, like We, we talk about it all the time and we, we don't know we anything know, about bridge. No idea. But if you guys out there who know bridge and want to fight people in bridge or Go duplicate to, bridge if you already yeah. burn the bridge at the regular bridge group, um, yeah, you, you totally can center. burn that bridge. Yeah. <laughs> stopping rotor. <laughs> well, there's cool bridges. <laughs> Oh man, I know I had something to say, but I totally forgot what I was oh, going to say. Oh, I interrupted you. I know, it was something funny that I was going to add on to it. Oh well. Moving on. Okay, so over at the Missoula Public Library, we have our computer electronics in the makerspace. It starts at 3. So from 3 to 6, you can work on a project of your choice or go in there and learn how to use their equipment. Word play is at the base at Warehouse Mall at 4 o'clock. This is word games, poetic exploration, free writing, and expansion wrought through sharing. Raising the Dead is at the Top Hat Lounge. There are live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So 40 years. And then they have audio, video, and then they also have trivia and an awesome happy hour. Open Mic Night is at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. If you're a musician or a stand-up comedian, you can go in there and showcase your talent. And then over at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a new to Medicare workshop, uh, the 22nd and 23rd, today and tomorrow, from 6 to 8. And it's for those approaching age 65 or, or eligible for Medicare due to a disability. Um, so you can register online at newtomedicare.eventbrite.com if you are interested in signing up to, for this Medicare class. 
Oh, they didn't pay for their uh, website, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the Musil Public Library, they've got an internet searching class that starts at 6 o'clock. You can call 721-2665 to register. This is for those that know how to use the computer, um, but don't maybe don't know how to use the internet, or want to look up things, but maybe don't know how. So. That's at 6 o'clock. But that's what's going on in your community. As always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net. But we're switching gears now. We're going to Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. Our guest on today's Musical Notes is perhaps the sexiest spy in television history. Woohoo! Winning three consecutive Emmy Awards for Best Dramatic Actress for her performance in 1967, 1968, and 1969. In addition to a Golden Globe Award nomination also in 1968, and on April 28, 2016, she was honored with the 2,579th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Born Mildred Fogel, Barbara Bain, known to the world as Cinnamon Carter, and there she is. <laughs> look at that look. She, you can see she looks like a perfect spy. Anyway, Barbara Bain is the best spy on TV. And let's catch her in action with that video and then I'll talk a little bit about her. Look at that look. She's gonna steal something from this guy here. She's known for doing that. This here, she's setting up the, uh, the prime minister who's out to destroy the United States and so that's why she was wearing that towel to set him up. <laughs> of that's course. what spies do. She's setting this guy up. And look at those looks, those intense looks when she sneaks around. <laughs> <laughs> like suits the patient. <laughs> and then she rigs the card for the card game here. <laughs> and she burns all the money up. She's just a sneaky lady on TV. So this gives you an idea why she's the best. Now to tell you a little, a little bit about her, Barbara Bain is an American film and television actress. She was born in Chicago from Russian Jew Jewish immigrants. She graduated from the University of Illinois with a bachelor's degree in sociology. Her first acting role was in, um, it's pronounced Patty Shavsky's play called Middle of the Night, and it went on a national tour in 1957, and this was just a play. She broke in early television with a television show called Tightrope with Mike Connors. She did three ABC series. The Law and Mr. Jones with James Whitmore. Look at that gun. <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> and uh, Adventures in Paradise and Straightway. And then she hit her stride in 1966 to 1969 with her husband on Mission Impossible playing Cinnamon Carter, the original spy lady. There she is with her husband there. And then she hit her stride a second time playing um, in the science fiction television series Space 1999 from 1975 to 1977 as Dr. Helena Russell. And she also appeared in the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> so this lady's pretty much done it all. She can do comedy and just do all kinds of things, but she's gonna always be best remembered playing Sidney and Carter on Mission Impossible. And on that note, I will stop. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks ASAP. Sure. So w what made you want to choose her? I don't know. She just came to mind when I was uh, thinking of ideas and I thought, oh, I want to do a spy lady for a change. And then what was your favorite role that she's been in? Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Well, she was very good in Space 1999, too. She was pretty smooth in that also. Nice. What's interesting about this lady, she did a lot of movies with her husband throughout cool. her career. And that's very rare in Hollywood. Yeah, it really is. Nice. Well, I'll have to look her up. Mm -hmm. Spy ladies are always good. Yeah, spy okay. lady, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for you guys at home, we have a new art clip from the Clay Studio. But unfortunately, it's going to end at the end of the week or next week. It's going to end on the 30th. <laughs> so, that's, uh, so we'll be able to show it on Monday. Yes. But of course... You, so you guys got to go to the Clay Studio, check this out. A lot of great stuff is always at the Clay Studio. Mm -hmm. It's three-dimensional. It's something you can like look out and touch, but you probably shouldn't touch. No touching. Unless they say you can totally touch it, but you know, Unless it's don't, like, don't like lift it up, but you can touch it or whatever. But it's like it's the one of the like only kind of art form where you can actually get a, a three-dimensional look, yeah. 360 look around. Touch it with your brain and yeah. your good thoughts, right? But yeah, this is me just... Um, Delays, but here, without further ado, um, I think I built it up enough. I think you did. This, I'm really excited. I know they all are too. Yeah. So Clay yeah. Studio, um, check it out. This ends on August 30th, which is next Tuesday. And the show is called Vermin.
Hello, you guys. We're back. All right. Okay, so up next we have events going on Tuesday, tomorrow. The first event we have are paddleboard lessons over at French Town Pond State Park that starts at 11. So from 11 to 12.30 or 1 to 2.30, you get a paddleboard lesson. They provide all the gear. You just have to show up and hand them over to $45. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they have scratch-off art that starts at 11 o'clock. And so it's foam, it's building foam, and then it looks like toothpaste, but the foam is, oh, no, that looks confusing. They used a different description of what scratch off art is. They used elephant toothpaste description rather than what the real description is. So they're doing scratch off art. I don't know what that means, but check it out. Over in the Alps boardroom of the Florence building, they have shooting the Bull Toastmasters. This is a lively Toastmasters club where you can improve your public speaking, improve your leadership, and grow your vocabulary. It starts at noon. Over the Missoula Public Library, they've got a library blood drive that starts at 2.15. So from 2.15 to 6.15, uh, you can donate blood. Just call 721-2665 and ask for Christine. And it's like the perfect place to mm -hmm. give blood because you can just like hang out, read a book, and give blood. And yeah. it's like, oh, I wish I had a book I can read. Well, you can because you're at the library. There's so many books there. There's so many books there. There's no excuse not to read. You could like read and then give blood and then read some my and niece, sleep. My niece knows how to check out her own book. Oh. Yeah, she's two. She's like, card, little kid's book, and she's like, gone. That's adorable. Yeah, she, she does adorable. it all by herself. Yeah. She's a little step stool and steps up there. But of course, next year she won't need the step stool because she'll be oh 20 feet tall. I bet that's so cute to watch. And yeah, she, she knows she's cute. Which it kind of takes it away. She totally knows she's cute. Yeah. Which I, I, I like I, as her uncle and as like a curmudgeon myself. I'm yeah. just like, ah, yeah, you know you're cute. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, like, oh, <laughs> get the book. <laughs> oh, oh, get me a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's too. She knows how to make sandwiches too. Yeah. <laughs> well, she only eats mac and cheese and yeah, like, like, chicken nuggets. Like uh, any kid that age, yeah. that's all they eat. Mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, anything no. green, no way. No. She's, yeah, she's, and she always goes to the libraries for Tiny Tales and all that stuff oh, too. Oh, cute! Yeah, so she Does she like book. it? Yeah, she likes going back there. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess. It's not really up to a two year old. What to do. <laughs> yeah, I like, guess she can not. only tell you that she's hungry. Yeah. Or if she's like, Tired or grumpy, but yeah. she really can't just say, "Is like I would like to go to the library, please." Like, oh, okay. Then. Yeah, I would like to go to that Tiny Tales. I love it, Mom. Yep. Like, but of course, what? giving blood is important, and you can do that at the library. I can't necessarily do it because I'm AB positive, which is the universal receiver. Oh. So I can't really give it to anyone else but people who are like me. But people can give you their blood. Yeah, anybody can give me your, their blood. Uh, just give your blood to Scott. Yeah, because I'm the universe <laughs> receiver, so if and I need a kidney, I can take a kidney from anybody. Scott's birthday's tomorrow. Oh yes, it's my birthday tomorrow. I was going to mention that at the end of the show because I wanted to end on a low note. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was going to be like, I was like, uh, another day older, another day closer to death. Ah, that's another pound of <laughs> And then I would say, thanks for joining us. And then just like exit. <laughs> another pound of dirt on your grave, Scott. Another pound of dirt on your grave. It's another year. <laughs> yes. Uh, taken from a quote from a very big, uh, I can't say it on television, but he is one. <laughs> yeah, he's very angry and really mean. He's not really angry. He just kind of like thinks he's all that in a bag of chips. He's very but mean. When he should just know he's just a bag of chips. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. A stale bag of chips. That's yeah. mean. Yep. Yeah. Labelless chips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving on. <laughs> yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center Redwill at 4 o'clock. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to help with anxiety, PTSD, and sleeping problems. Over at DraftWorks, they've got a pint night. This is for Women's Voices of the Earth. 50 cents from each pint, go pint sold goes back to them. We've got our Tuesday evening farmer's markets. It's going to be at the north end of the Higgins Avenue by the Red X's. It starts at 5.30. Yoga in the parks starts at 6. And this week is going to be at Franklin Park. So you can go and bring your own mat, bring your own blocks. Uh, they don't provide any equipment. They just provide the instruction. So that's at 6 o'clock. The Picking Circle is at the Top Hat Lounge, also at 6 o'clock. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go to the raised seating booth in front of the sound area and jam out. Tight. Yeah. At the Missoula Public Library, they have a community creative writing workshop that starts at 6 o'clock. That goes until 7.30. It's in their makerspace. At the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. They're going to be making summer pies, torts, and galletas. Oh, gosh, I didn't say that right. Gal galettes? 
I learned how to pronounce it before our show, and then I just said it. Galettes. It's Galettes. I said it in the Spanish version because it, it has two L's in there, but it's not. It's supposed to only be one L. Oh, Galettes. It's supposed to be Galettes. Yeah. It's supposed to only be one L. So I said that wrong. But okay, so they're making flat-headed cherry peach pie and basil galette, lazy lemon pie, chocolate raspberry truffle, um, and a plum and cardamom sorbet. Mm. That sounds awesome. System check is at the Missoula Public Library at 6.30. This is official gamers club for ages 19 and under. African dance classes at the Missoula Senior Center at 7 o'clock. Uh, this is for all dancers in all levels and ages and abilities. Um, it's $35 for four classes, $10 per class. Uh, and drop-in dancers are welcome anytime. And then Ula is at the Barn Movement Studio at 7 o'clock. That's usually only four bucks to drop in. At the Roxy Theater, this next one is really cool. This is tomorrow at 7.30. And so it's called Singer-Songwriter Showcase. This is the fourth year it's done this. And so it's um, singer-songwriters Susie Gibson, Tom Catmull, Jen Adams, and John Floridis. And so this will be the fourth year in a row that these musicians will come together. They'll play songs together. They'll play their own songs. Um, and it's all going to be at the Roxy Theater. And so tickets are $15 in advance, $18 at the door. They'll be available at the Roxy and Rock and Rudy's. And so this is just like a nice concert that you can see some of our local musicians that um, are done really well nationally, but choose to live in Missoula and cool. play around here. Yeah. We've got a couple more music things for tonight. Frankie and the Witch Fingers will be at Stage 112 at 9 o'clock. That is an 18 and up show, so it's only 5 bucks if you're 18, but it looks like it's free if you're 21 or older. And they're from Los Angeles. And then my last event is at the Badlander and it's the Missoula Music Showcase at night. So those are for those artists that want to show off their uh, their music. Yeah, you know. But, so that's what I've got going on for you guys. As always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, The Independent, and The Missoulian for more events in your community. Um, but of course, uh, this weekend is Roots Festival. Yes, it so, is. And of course, uh, do you know that uh, when our one of our kids are going to be playing? No, I don't. So one of our summer camp kids are supposed is in to a band. be. Yeah, is in a band. It's uh, Tom Catmull, who I just mentioned. His kids, his kids, uh, <laughs> Jack Catmull and Macy Catmull. They're always in our summer camps, and they're just super cool. Like I am always overjoyed whenever they come. They're really fun, really good kids. And so Mason, the younger one, is in a band, and he's a drummer. And they're called. Oh, the they're both in the band. Oh, I didn't know Jack yeah. was. Um, um, Jack the bass player. Jack is the bass player. I feel like Jack he always wears like those. Uh, um, Jack is corduroy uh, sports coat, and it's gonna be like l literally the hottest part of the day. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, and even later this week, it's supposed to be stormy weather, so you gotta watch yeah. out for that. Mm -hmm. And last year, if you guys remember the Roots Festival, it was smoky. It was yeah. like all that smoke Super inhalation. Smoky. It was mm -hmm. just like I was outside. I got maybe like 15, 20 minutes of each band that p performed. Yeah. Just nice little um, mm -hmm. idea of that. But unfortunately, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that this year because I'm gonna, um, because MCAT's gonna try to broadcast the very first um, opening game for Central High School and it's gonna be at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Um, I'm slowly gathering up um, helpers to help shoot that as well. I'm not asking you guys for help or anything. <laughs> <laughs> help, no. <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna try to broadcast that live on on MCAT at 7:30 this Friday, and it's gonna be broadcast from Washington Grizzly Stadium. I think it's good. I think it's really cool. I we're think gonna, it's too. That's we're gonna really try awesome. to have three cameras, mm -hmm. and it's gonna, just gonna show them playing football and stuff. It's cool. it's sports, and we, and um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have we we might have the same commentators from last year because they had so much fun last year, and they say I want to come back. I want to just talk. Mm -hmm. So you know, some people just like to talk, and just they don't know when to shut up. Scott. Huh. Huh. Anyways, um, Scott, weird. Okay, are you ready? Because I was just kind of pandering. I was kind of getting the camera set while I was talking while you I were mean, talking. I mean, I'm ready. Are you ready? So, are you guys ready for Tales from the Weekend? Are you guys ready? It's okay. not like it's not like uh, Hallmark or Bull Mark. It's where I give like a whole entire story rather than a synopsis of a story. And it's a it's, it's a nice thing I've kind of introduced, and it kind of gives my creative juices flowing. Yeah, I was about to say. Maybe I'll nice, make a movie based it's a nice on one of these stories. It's a creative outlet for Scott. It's I a need, good. Everyone needs a creative outlet. This is my creative outlet, mm -hmm. and I use my morning show to um, do, do it. it. So you're yeah. gonna have to listen to every <laughs> word that comes out of this mouth. So here is tales from the weekend. Yeah. I don't know why I do this, because it just falls down. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it down there. Okay. <clears throat> Charlie has worked at the same coat check 
to a building of millionaires and billionaires because there's nobody making a living doing that anywhere else. Um, Charlie has been called Chuck, Coke Guy, Hey You, and uh, Chuckaroo, uh, but never Charlie. Being fed up with his job, he started taking night classes. He wanted to learn more about art, and he had an eye for it too. Each night when he got off of work, he'd grab his coat and head to the nearest computer, whether that be at home or at work. He'd design posters and restore old photos. He started to get pretty good at it too, until the day he was fired. But of course, we'll get to that. It was a day like any other day, setting up the scene. He had decided to leave work a little bit early and, you know, to get an assignment that was due in the next hour and he wasn't quite happy with the with his presentation. Of course, this is like online, so he had to submit it online and all that stuff, so. So he grabbed his coat, so he thought, so he thought, he thought he grabbed his coat, but he didn't. <laughs> and ran out the door. Um, in his urgency, he had grabbed the wrong coat, like I said. Um, but this mix up would change his life forever, which would lead to him getting fired, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, coat Chuck Charlie was uh, walking down the street when he heard ring, 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 the sound of a loud but vocal recording of this onomatopoeia. He answered it, and on the other line was the woman who was looking for a good time. Oh. Charlie tried to explain to the woman that he had switched the coat with another man, but she didn't care. She kept pushing to get little Charlie to come over. Finally, Charlie said he'd come over just to get her to shut up, to, you know, instead of saying shut up in your face. But, <laughs> you know, he never went to see her. You know, he's just like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll be there. And then he never showed up. It's like, you know, it's a phone call. Who cares? Whatever. Yeah. But Charlie knew not to trust a stranger, especially ones who promise too much. <laughs> Unfortunately for Charlie, this woman had tracked him down to a coffee shop using the GPS device in that particular phone. Wow, she is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like a crazy person making a scene, this crazy lady made a scene at the coffee place. No one, um, no one stands me up, said the crazy lady. Charlie slumped down into his chair and ignored this lady, who for some reason found it hard to deal with rejection. She would yell his name and throw people's coffees on the ground as they got them. She got closer and closer to Charlie, but luckily for Charlie, she had no idea what this guy looked like. She looked pleased with herself when she began to dial her phone. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Charlie knew this was his one mistake. He rushed to his phone to put it on silent. But was it enough? Just then, a phone rang on the most unluckiest guy in the coffee shop, and she sprung into action. As she was beating this poor 40-something father of two, uh, of two, Charlie began to sneak off the door when the barista said, you forgot your coffee, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, right? Oh. As Charlie slowly, slowly turned, the crazed woman was two inches from his face, breathing heavily. He started to run away, when she grabbed the coat on his back, she was able to get in a couple of jabs before Charlie slipped right through the coat, causing the crazed woman to fly backwards onto the poor something-year-old father of two again. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie had gotten away for now. Coach Chuck Charlie was a walking down the street when the phone went off with a different kind of ring. Charlie looked at it, and it was the private number, and we all know most of the time people an answer these phone calls, right? You know, when you see private number, you're just like, oh, I wonder who this is. Most people actually do answer that call more than you think. Uh, anyways, uh, he picks up the phone, and it's the owner of the coat and the phone. Uh, he asked if they could meet up at the coat check as uh, soon as Charlie told him about the crazy woman um, taking it with the whole phone tracker coffee house scene with the father of two blah 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 all that stuff and the breeze stuff. Um, coffee told the man that he could uh, meet it with him in about 20 minutes to give uh, back his phone and, and such you know Charlie was running out of time because he had to give that assignment back to you know online before midnight but like any story ever told it had to be down to the wire. Um, Coley, Charlie finally arrived at work and his buddy coach check Mike was a man in the station. They did their stupid bro handshake and Charlie explained to Mike what happened. Mike laughed it off as nicely uh, as a nicely dressed man entered the building. Um, Charlie looked up and down at the man, finished his phone call. It turned out that this man was the son of the owner of the building. So like any uh, fun, trust fund kid with the delusions of grandeur gave Charlie a tongue lashing. Um, Charlie took it like a champ until the crazy woman from the phone call to the coffee shop entered 
the dispute. So she just entered the building as well. So like Uh-oh. any like a lioness to its prey, she lunged towards the trust fund kid and began to beat on him. Coach Mike entered from out of nowhere and grabbed the crazed woman off the trust fund kid. The trust fund kid, in his own anger, fired both coat checkers. Charlie picked up the coat that the crazed woman took from Charlie on the floor, and he said, I won't be needing this. I won't be needing a tip for this, sir, he said, as he and Mike exited the building once and for all. Interrupted the story, Charlie didn't get to send his assignment in time, but it was okay. His teacher was, you know, wasn't uptight about it. He was just like, hey man, I, like my assignment's late, something happened. He's like, okay, whatever, just send it whenever. It's like, cool. <laughs> you know, because most people would be like, you don't have to, ha- you know, like most people don't care about deadlines. Most people are just like, you know, like, oh, you know, man, he was like, okay, give me, the- thanks for giving the update. Oh, cool, cool, you send it in. He's like, you at least did it. All right, so the moral of the story is difficult people are usually drawn to difficult people because What's the fun in making things simple? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. But also, I mean, at journalism school, they definitely cared about deadlines. Journalism, they cared yeah. about deadlines. But, but if you explain to them, like, I mean, there's probably a couple teachers is like, yeah, that's cool, but you just know that, you know. It's true. Like, when, when you're first starting any kind of thing and any kind of assignment here and there, um, a lot of times you're just like, yeah, whatever, it's cool. Because they don't actually, the deadline's midnight, but they're not, the teachers aren't going to read it and grade it at midnight. Well, they'll see the time, though, that you send it, and if it's not at midnight, they'll dock you. Yeah. That was always mine. Like, I had a teacher that he wouldn't give you extensions, he wouldn't give you any time. Like, if it wasn't in at the time, it was a zero. Yeah. Hands down. No, but the, yeah, the best no thing about remakes. journalism is that they do follow their deadlines because if you yep. don't get your assignment on time, it won't air. Exactly. And it's like it never happened. Yep, it has to be down to the wire. Well, well like, they dock you points, which is a lot easier than a lot of times, what, like, if you worked at a station. If you worked mm-hmm. at a station, if you didn't meet a deadline, you're, you'd just, like, be like, oh, you didn't do your job. And it's like, that's, I don't know if they'd fire you right on there. Maybe if it Probably. was like a big national thing. Yeah. But if it was like a smaller market, it's like, don't do that again or you're fired. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, it, it really depends. But of course, you know, that was my uh, story. Coach nice. Check Charlie. I like that poor guy. Yeah, poor I feel guy. bad for him. But well, that it's woman. just like, it's so, like, it's, it's crazy. a, you know, like any story, it always has a mix up. It really does. It you really have does. to have conflict. It's like, you know, the climax, yeah. the solution. It's like, oh, what did you, what did you do today? It was like, oh, I, I, I met up with a friend. We had uh, lunch. It was like, what happened after that? We left, and then I went home and did nothing all day. And then what, what is nothing? I was like, I don't know. Watch YouTube videos. But there's so videos. many other things in there that happen that they don't even tell. Yeah. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, most stories people ever tell are just at the bars. Or just like, oh, man, I'm crazy at the bar. What did you do? I drank and hang out with my friends. It's like... That sounds really crazy. I don't know. That's not the stories I hear. No. I hear great stories all the time. Not <laughs> concerning the bars. <laughs> like, I had a great weekend. I went up to Flathead Lake and got to spend the night at a really nice cabin that one of my friend's dads rented and swim around and got to go in the lake and swim under the full moonlight. Nice. In Flathead Lake. Yeah, it was nice. That was it was nice. a fun weekend. Uh huh. But of course, that's like, you know, a short version. There's so many other things that happen. <laughs> but of course, uh, yeah, you know, the weekend's over. The weekend's just <coughs> begun. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a good week. It's the you last know, it's week be of a... summer. Uh, college kids and all those other, you know, younger ones. School starts in exactly a week from today. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time in my life I don't have to go back to school. Yeah. So I'm really excited, yeah. So all the orientations be... are happening this yep. week. Mm-hmm. Kids are getting dropped off. Um, yeah, all the students are, are coming back. The, Supplies they, are being bought. Yeah, the dorms, they start letting people in on Friday. Uh, I think And then, of course, uh, if you want to come in early, you have to pay a little extra. Yep. You have to pay like $200 extra just to Something show up a like day that. early uh-huh. or even two days early. Yeah. So all the college students are coming back. Town is getting busier. Roots Fest is this weekend. It'll be a good week. Yeah. yeah. But so. you, you can also have a good week by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash um, wakeupmissoula. <laughs> so you just, uh, you put this on and your week's automatically better just yeah. by logging on to this website. But of course, if you want to get a little more brownie points, you can like us on Facebook and you can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCATTVMissoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us, just check us out on MCAT.org. And without MCAT, we wouldn't have Wake Up Missoula. So um, if you want to find out more information about uh, MCAT and more, and if you want to be on our show, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT! You can also email us, MCAT at MCAT.org, mm-hmm. if you're too scared to actually talk to us on the phone, which nobody really does anymore. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, 
happy birthday to me yes. for tomorrow. And uh, if you guys see Scott, wish him a happy birthday. Sing to him. Yeah, but don't honk your horn at me. That's rude. No, it it's is like rude. if you see me on the street, just like open the window and say hi. Like, like don't don't just honk the door. Anyway, cat calm. Ooh, yeah. Scott, Ooh, look at those ankles. Mm, Woo! Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I still even wear the brown pants today. Shake it, don't break it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For wake up, Missoula. My will. name is Noel McBoy. And and I'm Scott Ramps. So don't break it. And here's um, Asaph Adonai on piano. <laughs>